good morning. It's Wednesday, 7 a.m. We haven't got any rain yet. It is coming. Probably going to get some here this afternoon, but we're going to go put some anhydrous on, see what we can get done this morning. Hopefully cover a lot of ground. we got to bring the bar up in front of the shop here and replace that uh, broken tube. One that's got a crack in it that's leaking, so we'll start with that and then get after it. Thought about doing some spraying, but I got to get another tow of chemicals out, and it's going to take a while to get stuff set up. And I got the critical stuff done yesterday, so let's just let's just keep keep moving on the anhydrous. Pulled the gauge wheel and the blade off. You can see our boot here. It is supposed to move like that. It's on a, a bolt with a spring and a pivot bolt, so it flexes and follows the contour of the ground um, but this tube right here is kind of what we need to be looking at so this is a double one because we've got a vapor line and a liquid line and there's a crack in it on the other side there so we're going to pull these hoses off and then pull this bolt and that should come out of there this is our piece and if you spin this around and you look right there it's cracked. That's why this row's been bleeding out so bad. And I didn't notice it, or I couldn't see that crack before. And yesterday I had Brock looking at this, and he trimmed these hoses back. We thought maybe one of the hoses had a small hole in it or something, but he must have bumped this around enough to spread that crack out, and it made it worse. So then as soon as they tried it yesterday, we figured it out. So we'll see if we got another one of these. I'm sure we do. Right there. You look at these side by side, you'll notice that uh, we've got a little bit of wear on the bottom anyway, or maybe a quarter of an inch off the bottom and flatten that out. So, probably not. I mean, that was fine, but probably not the worst thing to replace it anyway. All right, we got that changed out and all put back together. Let's go try it again. See if we can finish that field around my house plot field there. I don't know if there's quite enough anhydrous in this tank to do that all or not. It'll be kind of close. Uh, but we have six more full tanks sitting around. So we got enough anhydrous for almost 200 acres or a little more than 200 acres. Um, if we can do that before it rains, I'd be thrilled. Oh, how much better it seals when there's no cracks or hoses off or anything like that. Oh, it's, it's beautiful this morning. Beautiful. All right, we gotta mess with this corn plot. Um, and I gotta figure out how to turn through my grass here without hitting my barn. I was one round short of being able to finish the field with this tank, so um, we'll head back to the farm and swap tanks, grab a full one, come finish this, and then the next field's right. Kitty corner in the back there, we'll just jump across. Keep it moving. Making our way across the second field here. See the seed warehouse and the farm over there in the distance. Um, just switch tanks. Got an empty up there along the road. And this one and that one over there is still full. Should finish this. There's uh, about 80 acres in this field total. So uh, hopefully we'll get this one done. Should be around 11 o'clock, 11, 11, 30. And then we're going to try and go do another one. I don't know what time it's going to rain, but they say this afternoon. So the more we can get done before that, the better. Uh, when we're done here, that'll put us at 90 or 95 for the day. And to do that before lunch is, well, it's a pretty good day to start with. Uh, you know, if the rain holds off until later this evening, we could do two or 300 acres today. That would be awesome. This is one of the fields that we sprayed yesterday with some of the V5 fungicide. This is, it's V5 or V4.5 to V5. I mean, it's right there. Um, it's a little bigger than I would like it to be to be side dressing. I wish we could have done this a week ago, but it was too wet. We couldn't. I am doing more damage on the ends where we're turning and stuff, and any time we drive over it, that corn's pretty well gone at this point. Whereas, had we gotten out here when it was V2, V3 corn, it would grow back from it. But you can see, you know, in here where I turned, there's a lot of now dead corn. And I don't like that, but we haven't had a whole lot of choice. So, 
We do have sm some smaller cord yet that is still small enough. We won't hurt it, but we got to start with the biggest stuff. Basically, you have to follow the planner, and well, by the time we get there, some of it may be getting bigger than we like. So most of the corner of this field looks really good, but then we've got this spot here, and I am not sure what is going on there. It's it's not really a low spot. I mean, a little bit, but it's just really weird pattern right here in a small area, and I don't know exactly what's going on. I might have uh, agronomist Wade come and look at that. He's on his he's coming up tomorrow to uh, look at some fields with me, so maybe we'll venture back here. But definitely something going on there. Just finished up this field. Well, I say finished up. I got a pass and a half to do along this uh, pasture up here. This guy's house lot. So, uh, yeah, that's our field. We've got just a strip along here. This spot back here, that's the ground we left for the hunters. Back over there between the woods. You can't see. The window's too dirty. Anyway, they've got a food plot planted out there with peas and who knows what else. Oats maybe, some grass crop. It's all coming. So we don't have to side dress that. But it's not raining yet. Looks like it's going to hold off for a while. So we're going to keep going move on to the next field. We've got a, another farm that's got a 46-acre field in the back and 13 in the front. And we'll see if we can get that one done today. Off to our next field here. I believe this was only planted two days after uh, the last field that we were in side dressing. But it's definitely smaller corn. It's still bigger than... Um, well, I mean, it's not bigger than I want it to be, but it's... I could have side dressed this sooner, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Done a little less damage to it, but uh, the later we get, the closer to when the plant's actually going to use it. And that's a good thing. That's what we're going to talk about today is uh, nitrogen timing. Something I've been uh, thinking about or guys ask me a few questions about and stuff. And Well, we'll just go ahead and talk about it. So nitrogen timing. Obviously, we are putting on our anhydrous or our nitrogen, ammonia. Um, and an early side dress. I would call this early side dress. We're, we like to go anywhere from V2 to V5. Probably could go anywhere up to like V8, maybe to V10. Until the corn gets so tall we start breaking it off as it goes underneath the toolbar or the axle on the anhydrous tank. That's kind of the limit this, for this tool anyway. But just because we do it that way does not mean that is the only way to do it. In fact, there are lots of different ways and timings for uh, farmers to put nitrogen on their corn. It kind of starts off uh, the first opportunity that we would have to fertilize a corn crop for, you know, for the year uh, would actually be in the previous fall. So we, we could have, or some farmers will, put their nitrogen on for their 2024 crop 2024 corn crop in the fall of 2023. That is a perfectly acceptable, normal thing to happen in some parts of the country. Here, however, I have never actually seen that done. And the biggest reason for that is that we tend to get a lot of spring rainfall and we have fairly mild temperatures. And if you go back and watch my uh, my anhydrous video or the one where I talked about the nitrogen and why we use it and um, how it works kind of stuff, um, we talked about the ability for nitrogen to be lost through denitrification, through leaching, and depending on what form that it is in in the soil, it's more or less susceptible to that. Well, if the soil temperatures are below 50 degrees, the microbial activity is drastically reduced or at least, or maybe even completely stopped. Uh, and so we need the, that microbial process in order to break nitrogen down, convert it from one form to another. So if you put anhydrous ammonia on in the fall after the soil has cooled to below 50 degrees, it's basically going to sit there until it starts to warm up in the spring. Out west in Nebraska, in Iowa, some in Illinois, uh, potentially up in the Dakotas, I don't know exactly. Uh, this is pretty common practice to put fall anhydrous on because the soil temperatures get cold. They don't get near as much spring rainfall as we do here that would potentially leach that nitrogen out through the soil profile. They also are, I assume, using um, 
as standard practice, a nitrogen stabilizer to help slow that conversion process even further. And that doesn't really work for our situation for the reasons that I have mentioned. So then the next opportunity to put nitrogen on would be a spring pre-plant application. And some people do this uh, via your, uh, sorry, we'll start with anhydrous. Some people pre-plant anhydrous. We used to pre-plant quite a bit of anhydrous uh, until about five to six, eight years ago when we kind of decided to go all side dress. Uh, and for us at that time, it was, it was a timing thing. We were able to get the pre-plant stuff done before the beets were able to be planted or before we would start planting beets because the corn stalks would still be wet. Uh, it gave us two or three days there to put on some pre-plant anhydrous and kept us from having to side dress as much, which meant that we could get things done in a more timely manner. It works fine. You still run into some of those leaching issues, some of that potential loss, but nothing wrong with pre-plant anhydrous. There can be some potential issues with planting right into a field that has been recently um, had anhydrous applied to it. You can get a kind of a hot zone where that seed lays or where that anhydrous band is more so. They could burn the seedling roots as they start to grow and germinate. Um, that can be an issue, uh, especially with a toolbar like this where we're not putting it in the ground quite as deep as a shank machine. So if you could give it a week or two uh, for that nitrogen to kind of disperse through the soil a little bit and, and not be so hot in one small band, uh, that is better. We also, on our farm, had the issue of manpower, and this is, you know, going back eight years or, you know, to wind up back more so when I was a kid. Um, Dad would plant the corn, and uh, Phil would do pre-plant anhydrous, and I would maybe run a field cultivator or something like that, but the way we had our equipment and everything set up, it was either pre-plant anhydrous or plant beans. It was not both. We used the same tractor, we had the same operator, we could not go back, you know, do both of those things at the same time. And um, more and more we learned, the, the more and more critical it is to get the beans planted in a timely manner. So well, that's part of the reason we gave up pre-plant uh, anhydrous. Now, some people will also do some strip till in the spring and they could put some dry for uh, nitrogen, some urea in a strip, a band below the, uh, you know, where the, they're gonna plant their seed. Um, I have not heard or seen much of people using pre-plant liquid with uh, 28 or 32%, but I suppose that it does happen somewhere. Um, <clears throat> that said, there is a fair bit of urea spread around here, and we tried a little bit of that ourselves this year with some dry urea spread pre-planting and then worked in with our field cultivator so we're incorporating it into that top two three inches of the uh, soil and the nitrogen is just there when our corn roots need it so we'll see how that works but it is fairly common practice around here especially for the growers that are on 20 inch rows because you cannot do this and side dress it uh, at least with anhydrous in 20 inch rows there's not a big enough uh, gap between the rows to get the applicator to down and to drive the, your tractor down and all those issues. Our next opportunity to put some nitrogen on would be with the planter and we do that. Uh, that's a big part of the reason why I pull that tank behind my planter is so that we can get some nitrogen on with the corn planter. And I put on roughly 30 pounds of N through the different products that I've got. There's a rock over there. We should get it. We're not going to get it. Rock, there's a rock. Come get it. Thanks. Uh, anyway, so we put on about 30 pounds of N with our planter. Some people do more than that. I've heard as much as 60, but that just gets into a huge amount of volume. Some people don't use starter at all. That's just a personal preference kind of thing. Uh, I like to have some right there for those roots as soon as they're coming out of the, uh, the ground so that that plant is nice and green and healthy. But baby corn plants before this growth stage need very little nitrogen. So I don't feel like we need a lot there. Now, the more we put on the planter with the planter, the less we have to do later if that's how we're gonna handle things. From the planting pass, some people will do what's called a weed and feed. So we spray a pre-emergence herbicide out here. That's why you see no weeds, because our pre-emerge herbicide did its job. It worked very, very well, and it has kept the weeds from even getting started and germinating. Um, but it, it 
Well, ours does not have to go on pre-plant, at least in corn. Some things do. Um, but in that pass, some people, instead of using water as the carrier for the herbicide, because, right, we're spraying anywhere from a couple of ounces to, uh, in our case, two and a half quarts of actual herbicide per acre, but you need 12, 13 gallons of care of, of total solution to be sprayed efficiently and effectively. Uh, so we use water. Most of what you see coming out of that sprayer every time we run it is water. Some people on their corn will do what we call a weeded feed where they'll have the herbicide in there and then they'll use 28 as their carrier instead of water or maybe half 28. And so they will put some nitrogen on that way. Nothing wrong with that. Again, it works. Um, we have a little bit of a concern with laying nitrogen, especially 28 or even a dry urea, on the soil surface and leaving it there. You're really relying on getting a good timely rain to work that nitrogen down through the soil profile into the root zone where it is usable to the plants. The longer it sits on the soil surface, the higher the potential for loss or volatilization is, and uh, that's a bad thing. So that's why we don't do that. So from there, you go to a side dress, an early side dress application, which is exactly what we are doing here. We use anhydrous, we place it in the soil between the rows, allow those plant roots to grow to it, and um, that works really well for us. A lot of people will do this with liquid. They'll use 28, they'll have a little bit different style of applicator, uh, and it will put that 28 down liquid right in the middle of the row, just like we're doing with anhydrous, just a different form of nitrogen. I even hear, <coughs> I even hear some locally of people spreading urea, dry spreading it in corn that's about like this. Now I have I have major concerns with that because one, any nitrogen you get on the plant, you know, a urea prill goes down in the whorl of the plant, it's going to cause burn. It's going to hurt that corn plant. Two, we're right back to that same as a weed and feed application where you're laying soil or you're laying nitrogen on top of the soil surface. It is highly subject to volatilization and loss, and I, I just cannot get behind that one. If we're going to use any dry urea, it will get worked in almost immediately, uh, and that's where that pre-plant application comes into play. Now, the advantages of this early side dress is that we're putting the nitrogen on closer to when the plants need it. We're less subject to that leaching loss and that denitrification from it sitting in the soil for a long time, like a fall application or even sometimes a pre-plant application would be. And we are generally early enough that we're not doing a huge amount of damage to the corn, but we are damaging it some. Um, but the earlier we can get this on, the less damage we do and everything's good, right? For the most part, yes. Now you could wait and do a late side dress pass. Um, you know, we could get this bar through this corn for another two to three weeks probably. Um, but as the corn gets taller and taller, then we can do like a Y drop application where instead of using anhydrous, we use liquid, we use a sprayer with drop nozzles or tubes that have a, a Y on the end that lays it right at the base of the plant. Now in this case, we do still have that concern of putting the nitrogen right on the soil surface. However, there are some advantages to this. Instead of being broadcast spread over the entire soil surface, like a urea spreading application would be, or a weed and feed, you are banding it right on the roots of the corn, right on the bottom of the stalk. And what we know happens when we get even a little bit of rain is those leaves of the corn plant act as a funnel and they move that water right down the stalk, right to the root zone. This is good because now you've got a nitrogen band there and it's immediately going to take that right down to the corn roots. So you've got the nitrogen where you want it to be with minimal risk of loss because it's banded and not broadcast and you're getting moisture from any rainfall amount and I've even heard a heavy dew can do it to take that down to where you need it to be for the corn plant. The other big advantage to this is a sprayer, particularly like a haggy sprayer, you can get through tall corn, extremely tall corn. And so we're no longer uh, limited to how big the corn can be to get this through it. And we can put it on much later in the season. Are we going to do some damage turning on the ends? Sure, you sure are. But uh, being able to put nitrogen on corn closer to tassel when it really, really needs it 
uh, could be a huge advantage, or even V10, you know, shoulder waist high to shoulder high cord. Uh, it gets it done as close to when that plant needs it as possible. Now we also do a little bit of irrigation and we have that ability to inject some liquid nitrogen into the water stream. So we will actually be doing that where we're putting um, putting nitrogen and some sulfur. We haven't talked about sulfur today, but sulfur is a huge component of this. Uh, into the water and we can put it on multiple times throughout the year and just spoon feed that nitrogen to it. And the, the big advantage of putting it on with the water is now I don't have to worry about it sitting on the soil surface. I'm already in the water. We're going right down into the ground with the water that we're putting on. So um, huge advantages to that. Obviously you have to have the ability to irrigate and inject it, but it will certainly work. And uh, I'm looking forward to being able to do that on our court up there on our irrigated field this year. So any questions regarding the uh, application timing or anything that I've missed? I think I covered pretty much all of the different options. Uh, the advantages, pluses and minuses to all of them. You know, the guys doing fall application are getting it out of the way. They don't have to worry about it in the spring. It's done. Uh, lightens the workload a lot. Some guys are doing it with a strip till pass that's eliminating trips over the field. That's a big advantage. Uh, but they've got they've got the loss concern. It locks them into corn. You can't switch and go to beans after you've put the nitrogen on. Um, and then, you know, there's the pre-plant timing to try and lighten the workload out as well, get it done so you're not having to side dress, you don't have to worry about any crop damage, you don't have to worry about it getting super wet when you need to be out there doing it. Um, you know, if, if we got a bunch of rain this afternoon and then it stays wet, this corn's going to get big and we're going to get a little concerned about not being able to get our nitrogen on. I don't think that's going to happen, but it is certainly a possibility. So, uh, there, like I said, there's pluses and minuses to all of them. Every farm is a little bit different and, uh, people do what works the best for them. So I have a lot of my seed customers around here, or at least a couple of my seed customers that are doing dry urea before planting. And that works really, really well for them. I, I know like Brian Brown, if you watch Brian's farming videos, they do that weeded feed application. Uh, his dad runs their sprayer and they put on uh, liquid nitrogen uh, before the corn comes out of the ground. And they may even be doing it not as a weed feed, but just as a solo pass and putting on uh, a large amount of nitrogen that way. So, uh, but their soil is totally different. They have sandy soil, and they really uh, are in the, a spot where they need to do some split applications anyway. So, anyway, that's my nitrogen timing spiel. We're gonna keep moving here. I don't know how long it's gonna be before it rains, but we're gonna get as much done here as we can. We've got about 20 acres done in this field of 46, so we got you know 20, 25 acres to go, and. Uh, then we'll move on to the next 100 acre field if we get this one done. Well, speaking of I don't know how long we've got until it rains, that was that was back on the other end of the field when I said that. Here it comes. So I don't know if we'll get enough to get rained out here or not. Those are big raindrops. Let's see if we can make another round. Well, not only did we make that next round, another round, that's all we've done, um, but now our tank is about empty, which is good. It says... Oh, there's still 5% in there. I guess I better keep going. Okay. I said it was down to like 200 pounds in there, and I have yet to have one hit zero. So I kind of assumed that we were about empty, and I'm at the end right next to the other one. So I was just going to change it here. But if there's 5 or 6% in there, I don't know if we'll make another round, but we'll maybe make one pass. Pass and a half. Three quarters of a round, almost. That tank must have had a little more in it than the rest of them have. Um, so our, our, hold on, let me just show you. So our monitor here for the rate controller has this um, indicator for how much um, anhydrous we have left in our tank. And it doesn't actually have a gauge on it, it doesn't know, it just knows, okay, our tank capacity is about 6,200 pounds. And um, I tell it that it's full, like that tank is. So there's 5,084 pounds of N in a 6,200 pound anhydrous tank. Um, yeah, so last year with our old supplier, I always had 6,400 in there as kind of the number that they filled them to, and that seemed to be relatively accurate. This year, this supplier doesn't seem to fill the tanks quite as full, so I bumped it down to 6,200, and this is still the first one that uh, has actually hit zero for me, so 
That's all right. We'll hook onto this one, and uh, we should have enough to finish this field. And the rain stops, so we should be able to do it. It is not quite one o'clock, and that is our fifth anhydrous tank we have hooked onto today. Blowing through it, but covering ground, so good things. What in the heck is that? Deer carcass. Something got one. It wasn't me. This one's done. Let's move on to the next. 100 acre field up the road. It's the one that we planted a lot of in the rain. It'll be interesting to see if we can see any differences from where we started the field, where we were when we got rained out the first time, and where we were when we went back the second time, and then where we came back two days later the third time. Yeah, let's go find out. We'll probably get rained out there again, side dressing, so yeah, it's, it's all the same. I haven't been in the back of this field. This field here is, it's not great up by the road, but once you drop off the back of the hill, it's there's some really good ground back here, and uh, this corner looks really good. Some of the tallest stuff we've side dressed yet, bigger than anything else we've done today. Uh, and it looks good. We've gotten uh, almost 12 acres done, but we've, we're getting a few raindrops. So there is heavier rain to the west. Eventually it is going to get here. I don't know if that's now or three hours from now. I'm going to go until we can. Our, uh, our tank is empty here and I think it's going to start raining. I could probably keep going, but it, I looked at the radar. It's basically here. I think we're just going to call it and head back to the farm. So, oh, there comes another tank for me. But I got it empty. Should I leave it here or should I take it home and unhook it? Oh, dang. Here it comes. See it blowing across the field? Oh, buddy. We're about to get poured done. Good choice to bring it home. Ah, uh, that sounds like hail. Don't be hail. We do not need hail. This rain is hard. I might just sit here for a little bit. <sighs> we made a run for it. It's wet out there. It's raining hard. Four tenths, but it came fast. Oh well. Not the end of the world. It is still raining, but I think it's going to taper off here. We'll see what we end up with. If it stays around a half inch, we won't be doing anything tomorrow, but maybe Friday or Saturday we'll be back at it and we'll try and get a bunch of anhydrous done. We're close to half, not quite half yet, but uh, we made a good dent today. It was good. We did 165 acres. That's a, it's a good day considering I thought it was going to be raining when I woke up this morning. I unhooked that anhydrous tank. It was empty anyway. Parked the tractor out of the way there. Oh no! Our apple tree blew over in the wind. She dead. Bummer. Thanks for watching this one. Glad we got a little bit done today. Not a terrible amount of rain. We're sitting right at four tenths right now, so probably not in the fields tomorrow, but I bet we will be on Friday, so. Um, I gotta go. Ah, anyway, that's it for today. I had to come inspect the uh, pumpkins and sunflowers because I was informed that I ran some over this morning when we were side dressing, which I, I did, but they were in the way. I, what was I supposed to do? Anyway, have a great night. Thanks for watching this one. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I don't know if I said that already or not because I got interrupted with a phone call. So we got a, a baseball game tonight, it sounds like. And uh, oh yeah, I was telling you what's going on tomorrow. Agronomist Wade's coming up tomorrow. So we're going to walk plots, go look at some fields. He's going to pull some tissue tests and we'll just see how everything's doing. So it'll be too wet to be in the fields tomorrow. Maybe spray. We could maybe spray. We'll see. Have a great night. See you tomorrow.